more you check out what Netflix has in store, the more you come to the conclusion that they want to be the biggest original programming dog on the planet. My first guest is so inspired by Netflix that he would like to do something very special, turn his website, known as Collide.tv, to the Netflix of multicultural America. What happened, what happened to TV? TV? 2,000 channels, but nothing on worth watching. It's time for a change. Introducing Collide TV, a brand new way to look at television. Collide TV is an online TV network dedicated to delivering video content with a multicultural perspective. Think of it as TV on the internet, but it's so much more. Collide TV is your life, your world in color. Whether it's scripted series or cinematic short films, fashion to lifestyle, finances, health, and food to family, it's all delivered right to your laptop, mobile phone, tablet, even TV. No flipping, no waiting. Collide TV brings you high quality, curated video content that you want to watch whenever you want to watch it. So what are you waiting for? Join the evolution. It's time to start viewing the future of TV now. And joining me live in our studio is the creator and chief executive of Collide.tv, Latif Sonor. Latif, welcome in. Uh, thank you, Simon. Why did you decide I'm going to make my website the multicultural equivalent of Netflix? Well, I think, uh, you know, the opportunity that availed itself a couple years ago when I came up with the idea of launching a multicultural targeted site uh, really was about how do we take something that a lot of people are creating co content-wise and develop that into something that can kind of reach audiences that are being underserved? And so what Netflix did was really make it uh, a lot, my job a lot easier because uh, you know, people understood immediately what we were trying to do. But this has been something that's been in works well before uh, Netflix actually launched as an original content Player. And in the meantime, your service reaches what, about one million people a month? Yeah, so last month we did about two and a half million unique visitors. Um, so we've been averaging somewhere or, or, um, north of a million, uh, but last month was kind of our highest month. And how do the programmers find their way to you? How do you get the, the range of programming that you do? <laughs> Uh, so it's a mixture of having conversations with folks that we know, uh, content creators. Uh, you know, we we attend the festivals, we uh, we talk to content creators, and so a lot of times we're we're reaching out when we find things that we like, whether it's on YouTube or Vimeo or elsewhere. And then other times uh, they're they're reaching out to us. Now a week and a half ago, you launched this Indiegogo crowdfunding campaign, and as of two hours ago, about thirty-five hundred dollars has been raised. Uh, what do you make of the reaction so far? And do you think you need to do anything to step up the pace? Well, absolutely. I think uh, so. I think two things. One, I think the initial reaction has been uh, really well received. I think uh, one of the challenges that we are facing is, you know, we're a brand new network. We launched in May of 2014. There's still uh, there's still a lot of work to be done to kind of get people to be aware of what we're doing. And so I think as we are trying to tackle both. Uh, Building awareness and also getting uh, getting funding uh, through this crowdfunding platform, it's a bit of a challenge. But I think that uh, you know I'm confident that we're going to hit our number. How'd you decide a do crowdfund, b do Indiegogo? So I think the crowdfunding came out of really a uh, you know it was it was a necessity. We 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 um, I'm, I fund the company. Uh, Privately, we don't have any VC money as of yet, and so ideally, you know, the crowdfunding opportunity was a way for us to take the brand and put it out there and and let consumers help kind of decide how we come to market. Uh, we did an event last fall where we reached about um, it was a festival, and you know, we reached about two thousand people, and everyone was really excited about what we were doing. So we knew we had something, and it's just a matter of following through. And you know, as as these things go, it takes a little time to kind of build the momentum. Yeah. On our screen behind us, we're seeing a little bit of the website, what it says on the home page, where this is a platform, and you call it a video platform, that's dedicated to develop, deliver, discover uh, these interesting video series that have a multicultural perspective. How much of the programming did you get off, as you said, the festival circuit or other sources, and how much of it came to because you were just they found you. They found you online, and they said, we've, we've got to get involved in this movement. Yeah, I would say that, uh, you know, uh, Probably a, a quarter of the content came through some sort of festival relationship or someone that we met along the way. Uh, most of the content that we've had, uh, I, I think, was both a mixture of folks reaching out to us and then us uh, reaching out to 
content that we uh, that we really believed in. Um, we're a curated platform, so it's really about how do we hand select the types of shows that we believe are really exemplify the best of what is online and and from a creativity and a, uh, a create and production perspective, and uh, and that reflect the true diversity of of you know pop culture and, and current TV. Now, it's, did it start as purely unscripted programming, or did it start as purely scripted programming, or at some point did the two genres mesh in? Yeah, I, it really, it, it started mostly scripted content. I, I'm a big fan of scripted uh, episodic content. Um, and what I thought was, you know, YouTube had its own kind of kingdom that they established, and it was really around uh, user-generated content, kind of really short form. And, and I really believe, and, and still uh, believe, and I think it's starting to, to met out a little bit, that, uh, you know, scripted episodic content can, um, can be a viable, uh, uh, play online, and and you know we're seeing that now with obviously Netflix and HBO now, and and uh, you know and other platforms that are launching digital services that are that are doing scripted even long form content. We're talking with Chief Sonor. He is the founder and the chief executive of Collide.tv. It is the website. It's been out for several years now. Now, as he's mentioned, getting about 2 million people catching it on the web. And now he's out through a crowdfunding campaign to make it a Netflix-type network available on smart TVs and on devices that make TV sets smart. We'll get to that in a little bit. We'll also show you the crowdfunding pitch that is currently available on Indiegogo and how you can get involved. Latif is here right in our studio at Brooklyn Penn Media near the Barclays Center this half hour on Tomorrow Be Televised. Simon Applebaum here with you live from New York. Happy to have you with us this Monday afternoon on Blog Talk Radio. If you have a question or a comment, ring it in at 646-652-2906. Or your chat room, Simon Apple 04 by name. Guest 854 has joined the room, and we do appreciate it. Friday on Tomorrow Be Televised, Pop Network has got a new series premiering this Sunday night right after their live coverage from Hollywood of the Daytime Emmy Awards. It's called Queens of Drama, and it's about a group of daytime drama stars who want to create, guess what, their own scripted series. We'll talk about the show and the series they're trying to do with executive producer Adam Reed. Then one of my favorite bloggers and Twitter people, who used to run a website called tvgameshows.net will join us. I've wanted to have him on the show for years. We finally will have him. Steve Beverly, he's the terrific guest, and you'll hear why right here, Friday, 3 p.m. Eastern, noon Pacific, on Tomorrow Will Be Televised. What's been the reaction from the production community, Latif, to what you're doing? Uh, so uh, there's been a lot of positive reaction. We were working, you know, part of what we do, and the reason why it's a video platform is the, the TV, the, the digital TV network is just a part of it. Uh, we're really about enabling uh, content creators and empowering them to be able to create and tell their stories. And so I think compared to other platforms, especially if you're a content creator of color, African-American, Latino, uh, or of a diverse background, whether that's LGBT or what have you, uh, you don't necessarily have that many op op outlets and opportunities. And so what, what's really been happening is we're, we're getting a lot of positive response, both from the creative community as well as uh, the consumer base that are saying that they want more original content, they want to see more, and folks want to create more for the platform. So how do you pitch content creators? that your platform is a way, if not the way to go, when there is so much now out there, when you're seeing, for example, ABC doing shows like American Crime and Blackish and Fresh Off the Boat and Fox doing Empire and BET and TV One and Univision and Telemundo, et cetera, you know, expanding the amount of original programming they're doing, especially original programming here in the U.S. Yeah. So I think, uh, you know, having having a broadcast background, I, I worked at BET for four years, and, and um, I think that uh, the, the difference for, for what we're providing uh, twofold. One, we're providing, I believe, what is really uh, at the nexus of the future of television and content creation. Uh, and we're doing that on a platform that really helps to kind of uh, quickly assemble an audience that likes the content that you're creating and, and put them around it. I think when you talk about uh, the TV networks uh, per se, they, they're they're you know they're challenged by ratings, right? And so a show, uh, I think there was a number out that there's about 72 or so uh, pilots this year that are coming out that uh, that have people of color as leads or or in ensemble roles, and and you know the the chances that uh, you know. 90% of those don't make it, I think gives us an opportunity to really kind of reinvent how uh, stories are told using a digital platform. 
whatever doesn't make it, and we're about three weeks away from the broadcast networks announcing what pilots they will go to series on, would you, let's say, approach them and say, okay, you didn't make it on ABC, you didn't make it on Fox, you didn't get picked up by, you know, X Network, TBS, Turner, uh, TNT, come to me? Absolutely. I think that that's part of, uh, that's that's one of the thinking that we have around our strategy. And it's really about how do we continue to elevate the bar uh, with the content that we have. So we're working bottom up and top down. Latif, we have a call. We're going to take it. Hello, you're on tomorrow. I'll be televised. What's your name and where you're calling from? Hi, this is Dawn in Orlando. How are you? Dawn, great to have you. You're on the line with Latif Sonor from Collide.tv. Go ahead. Hi, Latif. So you are a visionary, and people like you and me, we see a void, and we take the responsibility to fill that. So I know you have to start small, but where do you see Collide TV in five years? I say if you had all the capital you needed, all the support you needed, does it look different from today? Uh, yeah, hi, Dawn. How's the weather in Orlando? Hopefully it's, uh, it's sunnier here, there than here. Um, <laughs> Cloudy. So yeah, so so I think that you know the the five year plan and, and even I believe it's it may come to fruition sooner than that is to really create a global TV network and, and TV in the sense of uh, content that is streamed across any device uh, anywhere in the world and so we're, what we're really focused on is obviously starting in 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 the U S and really building up a base there but I believe that the content that we're creating the stories that we're telling are portable across the globe whether you're talking about Africa. You're talking about Latin America. You're talking about Europe, and so uh, in Asia and beyond. So I think that our, our goal is really to kind of uh, follow this niche, uh, if you will, because I believe that as the as the uh, landscape gets more fragmented, the opportunity is to be able to really kind of hone in and deliver a a, a, a compelling offering to a targeted audience that wants that offering. And you're seeing that happen now with uh, you know with the shift to kind of these. Uh, Skinny bundles that networks are doing. Uh, that uh, the kind of thing that Verizon announced last that week. That Verizon announced, right? Exactly. And for those who didn't catch the news, what Verizon wants to do is they want to give you a basic package of let's say 35, 50 channels uh, for a certain fee, and then for ten dollars extra, you get these packs devoted by genre, lifestyle, sports, etc. And I know they've had. Uh, they may have an issue with ESPN, which is said publicly, yeah. no, you're not part of our bundle. We have a contract say you must offer as part of a basic service. Since you're not, you got trouble head. Et cetera, et cetera. Yeah, exactly, exactly. And, and you know, I think that the uh, the the MSOs, the the cable providers, satellite providers, have been trying to do uh, something like this uh, with targeted multicultural content uh, on 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 their platforms. And I think now uh, the opportunity really gets blown open when you think about platforms like Drama Fever and what have you that are specifically targeted to uh, to a certain audience and certain demographic. And I believe that uh, what we're doing kind of aligns with where. where where the digital space is headed and where TV in general is headed. Mm -hmm. Dawn from Orlando, thanks for the call. We appreciate it. All the best. Thank you. Bye thanks, bye. Dawn. You're very welcome. We have Latif Sarnor from Collide.tv here with us live in our studio on Tomorrow Be Televised. If you want to follow Dawn from Orlando with a call, let us know. Give us the ring at 646-652-2906. That number's good anywhere. Catch us live on Blog Talk Radio or locally here on Brooklyn Pennant Media in the greater New Ever York area. Or you can use our chat room, Simon Apple 04 by name. Um, let's show people or let people hear your pitch for crowdfunding for Collide.tv. So uh, check this out. Here is Latif on the streets of New York making the pitch, $150,000 through Indiegogo. For years, people of color have been mostly invisible to Hollywood. Our stories, our lives have largely been underrepresented on screen. But even with the recent success of programs on network TV, there's just not enough of the images we yearn to see. Hi, I'm Latif Sarner. I'm the CEO and founder of Collide TV. When we launched Collide TV almost a year ago, we set out to find programs featuring compelling personalities, insightful storytelling, and often untold perspectives. Collide TV is home to some of the best culturally diverse and engaging video content available online. We are the network where talented creatives of color come to showcase their work and connect with an audience hungry for entertainment that speaks to them. How are you guys doing? My name is Dion Sapp. I'm the creator, writer, and co-star of Wait. Collide is giving an opportunity to tell a story, you know, in the way in which I saw it. There's no, you know, when you get to certain networks, it's like, I love your idea, but change it. You know, and it's like, 
I haven't gotten that with Collide. What's going on? My name is Alan Alfaro. And I'm Jamie Fernandez. Uh, I'm the creator of the show Henry. He's the star. I'm Henry. A platform like Collide TV is excellent for a show like Henry. You know, I think Collide TV is important because we need platforms for the unique stories to be told. Hi, I'm Quincy Morris, the creator of Legal Aids. Hi, I'm Sharina Martin. I'll be playing Reagan in Legal Aid. For stories like this to be told um, unabashedly without any restrictions. I think it's really important and I'm excited to be on the cutting edge of what's next in telling yeah, stories. Yeah. We are looking to raise $150,000 in the next 30 days so we can fund the next wave of storytellers. But that's just the beginning. Every dollar we raise over our goal will allow us to produce more of the shows you want to see. Unfortunately now, I mean, television is just so oversaturated with a lot of shit that just does not matter. <laughs> I watch certain shows and I'm like, okay, I see very little love, I see very little hip hop, but that's what you call your show. More positive shows. I would like to see more love on TV. Yeah, I would, I would like to see someone on TV like myself, you know, so a, a normal day person with some awesome adventures, not really sure what. With your help, Collide TV could deliver you the types of shows, characters, and stories you want to see, and that truly reflect the world we live in. Support the crowdfund by donating whatever you can, whether it's $5 or $5,000. You'll also get to choose from some great perks as a thank you for your support, including walk-on roles, VIP events, and a free subscription to our new streaming service, Collide TV X. Even if you can't donate, you can help us by spreading the word to your family and friends and by watching Collide TV. This is TV for everyone. This is an issue for America. Hey, it is. <laughs> Issa Rae, the creator of uh, YouTube's Awkward Black Girl, has a project now called ColorCreative.tv where she is trying to get pilots produced by and featuring people of color on the air in her own way. Any thought about perhaps doing some sort of alliance with someone like Issa uh, to provide a vehicle for her work or other people of color to get their promoing on? Yeah, yeah, we're absolutely interested in working with really uh, all, all the members of the creative community. I think Issa is a uh, phenomenal talent. Obviously, she has a lot of uh, she has a lot of uh, irons in the fire right now with HBO and, and the book and all the other projects. But uh, you know, we're looking at you know we're interested in working with Black and Sexy. We're interested in working with uh, with Issa. Uh, you know, we're interested in working with Flama, right? And so I think that the opportunity is the great thing about digital is it isn't about the four walls that you live in, right? It's really about Connecting um, throughout the uh, you know throughout the long tail of the of the web, so we, we're we're not we're not just focused on just the things that we're doing. We're, we're trying to really uh, surface the best of what's out there, and that means working with all the great creatives. Latif, in case this Indigo campaign doesn't raise the one hundred fifty thousand, do you have a plan B or a plan C? Do you go to venture capitalists? Do you go to angel investors? Do you go to advertisers? Do you find maybe a conglomeration of all three to uh, get yeah. you off the ground to the next level? Yeah, all of the above. I think you know. Uh, I, I think we definitely looked at doing the crowdfunding as a, as a first uh, as a first salvo out there to kind of get going. But we're we're talking to you know we're talking to angel investors. We're talking to uh, media companies. As as potential opportunities to be able to distribute our content both uh, through a digital platform but even also VOD right so I think that uh, you know we'll get as creative as possible and uh, and and whether or not we raise the 150 uh, through Indiegogo doesn't necessarily mean that you know uh, all is lost we're, we're, we're really focused on continuing we're actually going to launch a new season uh, later in May and um, you know we're going to continue moving the ball forward one of the ways you want to move the ball forward, Latif, is with a project that was a short film at the Cannes Film Festival last year called W8, or Wait. Wait. And what makes it special is because as a very special actor, if you remember the TV series The Wire, one of the most riveting performances on that classic HBO series was by Michael K. Williams. And apparently he is part of this project, which you term Breaking Bad meets The Wire. Yeah, uh, yeah. So it's an exciting project. It was brought to me uh, by a gentleman named Dion Sapp, the uh, the writer and creator of the series, and uh, he had created this short film. And one of the things that I thought about, as far as one of our potential strategies a while back, was to really look at short films after attending all these film festivals as an opportunity to be able to um, give them extended distribution. Because you know, a lot of times with the short films, uh, if they don't get a deal at the festival, they tend to kind of you know just languish 
ocean obscurity. Um, and so I think that what, what weight really presents is twofold. One, it gives us an opportunity to really hitch our wagon to a show that I think is phenomenally written. It's well acted. Um, it's the type of show that if you, like I said, if you miss The Wire and you miss Breaking Bad, you're going to love this show. But I think more importantly, it also gives uh, another opportunity for content creators who are working in film to understand how they can shift to uh, you know to another platform and get their content seen and maybe even take it even further. If you want to see Collide TV in action, here's where you go online. It's www.collidetv.com. It's www.collidetv.com. And if you want to participate as a crowdfunder in the Indiegogo campaign, you go to www.indiegogo.com. The campaign will run until early May. Latif Sonor, the head of Collide TV, thank you again for joining us and all the very best with the crowdfunding, but more importantly, all the very best in turning your website into uh, something very special for multicultural television. Thank you, son. And TV overall. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you.